Britain, the morning sunlight rests on no city walls older than those of York. Once called Eberacum by the Romans, later the chosen site of a great minster and the capital of a kingdom. Now the clatter of pack horses passing Warmgate Bar has given way to the noise of modern transport, leaving to gather the early morning workers. Embattled York, they called it once, when Booth and Bar used to watch the wild road north, and these streets were loud with stalls and bargaining tongues. Now, traders and typists, merchants and clerks, rally to the shops and offices where today's business is gathered. The older streets have lost their traffic, traffic that grew too big for cobbled alleyways and burst out of them, went to the walls and broke great breaches through, so that York could reach out into a new age to take the railways into its lap. It must have shaken the old walls when the first trains came rumbling through. That was back in 1840 or thereabouts. Now York's something of a centre for transport, with a grand station that any station must be proud of. And that's where I come in. Each morning, I'm met by what some folks would say is the same task. Hidebound routine, they'd call it. Well, some of it may be. Now, there's more to railways than routine if you care to look for it. Most of this stuff comes from region, that is, area headquarters. There's often a batch of extra trains for the weekend. Some don't need more than a glance. Now, I can leave that lot to my secretary. But there's some that need a bit more organising. There may be a cup tie somewhere. That'll mean more trains for the crowds and staff brought on to look after them. And then the next lesson is dictation. My dispatch case doesn't hold all the messages coming into the station. As well as a phone exchange in headquarters, there's a teleprinter place. Up to the minute reports on the traffic position and such like. They deal with most messages in the outer office. Perhaps there's a horse box wanted, or a restaurant car needing its gas cylinders and fresh water tanks replenished. This is where all these extras are tied into normal station routine. I never spend more time in the office than I can help, and as soon as I've dealt with urgent matters, I'm off on a tour of inspection. Now you have to be right smart to beat these young train spotters under the platforms. They come from all over, just to spend the day collecting engine numbers. I've always in mind that some of these youngsters might be working for the railways too someday. So it may sound foolish, but I like to see things straight before they get round. Not that some of the little devils always leave them that way. I don't get far without someone chasing me with a message of some sort. And I always reckon to show interest. If I can make the smallest job seem as important as taking a train a couple of hundred miles, then I'm not doing so badly. Ah, oh, there goes the 917 Sheffield. Now, there was a last minute call for an extra coach on that. Eight, ten, good. They managed it. Not many folks about yet to warm the platforms up. But from now and for an hour or so, trains will be coming and going one every three or four minutes. Twenty-five in an hour and a half, to be exact. Nine-twenty from Newcastle's on time. Those coaches will be all ready for the ten-five Edinburgh. Things seem to be going all right. So I've time for my call into the signal box. We used to have eight old hand lever boxes to cover the 33 miles of track. Now it's just one panel and a bank of switches. One glance and the signalman can tell exactly where trains are in his section. And he can set a path by turning a switch that sets every signal and moves every pair of points along a line of track. There's the North Britain coming in now. As the train's wheels come into each section, they make those big bulbs light up to show exactly where she is. Train 
we keep a record of delays, and whether it's a piece of coal in the points or an elephant on the line, down it goes in this occurrence book. And for those that can read between the lines, railway fashion, it's a chronicle of all the life and activity of this place, but not the only one. Train now rising at platform 14 is the 950 for Grantham and King's Cross. Train now recording. This is York. A train for Rotherham, Sheffield, Derby, Birmingham, Gloucester and Bristol will leave at 10.3 from platform 8 south. Train for Malton and Scarborough at 10.15 from platform 15. The Bradford Scarborough should be ready. Ah oh, yes, they're setting the path now. There she goes, right across the junction, taking her way to the northeast, signalling her progress as she moves. is just beginning to tail off now, but the day's work isn't just moving trains in and out of the station. Down in Clifton Sidings, for instance, coaches are forever being shuffled and dealt out again. Some will have to go over to the carriage and wagon works for repair. And besides new coaches being built, the old ladies of the rolling stock come to this place to get braced up, and they come out looking as new as if their buffers had never been bumped. Just time to tidy up before the place fills up again. For there's always work to keep us busy every minute, trains or no trains. And there's laundry, for instance. That comes with these mechanical horses now. Not that they're as good for gardens as the old kind, but they bring a bigger load of baskets. We one of Transport's central laundries in York. Every day there are baskets of clean linen going from here to station hotels all over the country and down to King's Cross for sleepers and restaurant cars. And there's oil lamps too. I often think it's funny that though we've enormous organisations making and running nearly everything nowadays, the safest thing for a train is still an oil lamp trimmed and filled just right by a chap like this. That's railways. The latest thing in signal boxes in one hand and the oldest thing in lamps or headgear in the other. Every once in a while, this hat's my symbol of office. A symbol that stands for more than 125 years of railways in Britain and all that they still mean to us. It's a touch of tradition. When I put this on, my responsibility seems to grow a little and there's an extra shine on the day's work. Every time a train comes in, it means a complicated operation. To get it away on time, each man must know his job and get on with it without being told. On 
this station, apart from a change of driver, and fireman, and guard and inspector, there'll be at least 15 people with a particular job to do before the train's away. There's the lad who was checking the wheels for faults and pausing on the upstroke to put the back of his hand to axle boxes to see that they're not running hot. There are the porters getting parcels over to a train on the far side of the station while the fireman's filling up with water. There's the platform inspector, the men in the signal box, the announcer, the platform foreman and porters who've been loading parcels. And that's to name just a few. But in less than 10 minutes, the train must have its load and be ready for off again. from York, the trains travel the old main routes. But out in the Vale, the luggage-laden crowds give way to individual people. Perhaps someone like Mr. Barnes at Thornton Dale, who's been sending his prize rabbits to shows ever since anyone can remember. Once he'd have had to go trotting into the nearest parcels office with his boxes himself. Now something more personal has come replace the stations sprinkled about the Vale. For these areas used to be served by branch lines, single lines, where the engines gave two puffs and put their brakes on for the next halt. Now these are going back into the melting pot. Their passengers have taken to buses and the parcels go by van. Each day, this man drives out from Malton and across the moors, past stations where the level crossing gates have clanged for the last time. In these parts, they no longer hear the panting approach of steam engines. Now this van comes right into the villages. It brings their newspapers and carries their parcels back to the trains that go steaming in and out of York. At York Station, Besides all the goods traffic, the afternoon always brings another rush of people. Some from the Vale aiming to be in London by 6.30, or perhaps businessmen from Middlesbrough who will be in Bristol before 9 o'clock. Now riding at platform 40. And every day, something different happens on these platforms. <laughs> For while there's hundreds only asked to be switched about as fast as they can get, every now and again there's someone who can't cope with platform rushing and stair climbing. And we're ready for them too. May we remind you, have you left anything in the train? Whether it's helping invalids or fixing safety lamps, it's a human job of work. Aye, but you don't get human service just by asking. You've got to get people working together. So you have meetings like those of the local departmental committee. That's where the staff and management get together to deal with, say, shift work. And there may be a few complaints, too. Oh, it can get warmed up at times, but it, it usually ends with people breathing agreement all over each other. Over in Tea Room Square, they're sorting out the mail. There's another batch of human give and take. Sort through that lot and you'll find a collection of real stories as varied as their destinations. It's the same with the booking office. They're not selling just tickets in this place. They're selling journeys to folk who are going to find a new job or getting married 
or joining their families or leaving them. These lads can check tickets till they're blue in the face and they'd better check them right too or the passenger agent will be after them. But there's something that travels through each day that you can't put a price on. In this job, I suppose we all start by serving railways. But if we've any sense, we come to realize our transport job begins and ends by serving people. From their places of business, traders and typists, merchants and clerks, move out to the bus stops. Evening traffic shakes the city's old walls. Behind the confusion, systems of order still deal with people's never-ending demands. Already, while today's messages are flowing through, next year's timetables are taking shape in the departments of area headquarters. Divisional operating superintendent. Hello, British Railways York. In headquarters, they're just bringing the day's planning to a close. And they have to plan for more than York Station. For these are the people who govern this area, an area that reaches beyond Yorkshire to Northumberland and Durham. It was in this part of the country that railways started, and the tradition stretches back a long way. Back to those who ruled in the old northeastern days. And it goes back beyond them to George Stevenson and George Hudson, the railway king who said, Mac all railways come to York. And old Edward Pease, godfather of Stockton Railway. The tradition reaches back to its beginnings. Here in the Railways Museum in York, the old engines are stored. The old giants whose coming raised the signals for a new age. But to all those thousands who come to visit here, these are symbols now, monuments to those who built the railways. And though time has dimmed their fame, at bottom there's no break. The hand that hauled the lever now turns the switch. It's still the same humanity setting itself to learn a new path. And now, I've finished for the day. But there'll be no break for my leaving. Trains will still be clanking and battering through York all night. When I was at school, I recall they used to tell us that if you give a thing a shove and then leave off, the thing will still keep on going. Well, when I've given York Station my shove for the day, I reckon my chaps will keep it going all right till morning. So I can shove off myself. Aye, that's it.